This video is about my New Year's resolutions for 2024. Let's start with what I did last year. I didn't really do proper New Year's resolutions last year, but I did accomplish a lot of goals. So I'll talk you through what I did in 2022 and how I did it, how I track it, what do I use. How I track my New Year's resolutions is I use an app called Notion. It's brilliant. I didn't really use it last year and that's my own fault and this year I want to get back to using it. So let me show you. I'm going to show you my goals from my goals from 2022. So these are my 22. So essentially I create like a page and I have a quote at the top because I'm a big quote guy and it says don't worry about looking good worry about achieving your goals and that's Ray Dalio and that just keeps keeps me motivated. So these were my goals in 2022. I broke them down into loads of different areas, fitness, food, finance, work, pleasure, audacious goals, mental health. And then within those overarching goals, I had like a bullet point list of things I wanted to achieve. Like I'll show you fitness. So fitness is a perfect example. As you can see, I um, I uploaded my Strava thing. One of them was run a marathon. So the first um, I woke up on January the 1st, 2022, and I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to run a marathon. I'm just going to try and run a marathon. And I managed to run a marathon. It took me just under four hours. I uploaded it, a picture, screenshotted my Strava, uploaded it to Notion. It allows me to keep a record and go, God, that was cool. Keeps me motivated. As you can see, I had a few other things like do an Ironman, enter a 100-mile, 24-hour race, gym five times a week, swim twice a week as my other fitness goals. As you can see, I haven't ticked them because I didn't do them. And this is my own fault. I lost a bit of focus in 2022. I did go to the gym to be fair five times a week. That should be, but I stopped rechecking in on my goals. In 2023, I didn't really write, I don't even remember writing them down. It was, I don't know why I didn't. I feel like I accomplished a lot, but I didn't write them down. So I did an Ironman last year. I did run 100 miles in under 24 hours. I gym, did gym five times a week and I did swim twice a week. And I think it's because I built, the ha built on the habits of 2022 in 2023. So they became, it wasn't, oh, I'm going to run Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. It was like running's just what I do. I am a runner. Let me take you through my goals for 2024 because this year I thought I'm going to get back into using the Notion. I use Notion for other stuff but for my New Year's goals and this is what I've done. So I start off with a quote again carrying on. A focused fool can accomplish more than a distracted genius. Great believer in point the ship in a direction, put the sail up and get going. I also have a little like quote from Chris Williamson I really like, which is about doing the thing. I won't read it out, but as you can, you, if you own time, you can pause it and read it. It's a fantastic quote. I've limited the number of areas that I've got goals into. As you can see, compared to 2022, I've only got one, two, three, five areas. So let's go through them. Fitness is one. This year, my fitness goals, they're big, but they're not massive. So I've always wanted to be in this sub three hour marathon club. I thought, you know what? Before New Year, I signed up for the Paris Marathon, got a place. So the that's in April this year. The aim is to run the Paris Marathon in sub three hours. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to use this runner app. It's a I've done a video on this previously. It's got a plan. I've never followed a plan. So I'm going to use the runner app for all of my marathon training all of it. I'm going to create a weekly vlog on it and that's coming out Monday. The third thing is I'm going to join Monday Night Swim Club and swim at least once a week. So when I was doing my Ironman training I got really into swimming. I was swimming most day mornings. You sort of got to if you're going to do a full distance Ironman. But swimming's one of those sports where if you stop going you you just don't keep it up. It's like the technique. There's a lot into swimming and I really enjoy it. So I'm signing up to the club on Monday. I start, actually start this Monday coming. I'm looking forward to it. It's every Monday night. I'm hoping to at least keep my hand in and ideally I'd like to swim twice a week and I think that's doable but I'm definitely going to go to this club on a Monday. The fourth one is do one training session on a bike once a week. 
either on Swift or outside. So Swift is an online training platform, essentially. You can get your laptop, your iPad, you sign in, you can join a, an event online. It's all virtual with, with your friends or with, with, with um, randomers. And you can, it's it's fantastic thing. You connect your bike to a trainer, you pedal, similar experience, but you don't get the weather. That's great. I, I've got all the gear. I just don't use it. It's stupid. I should do because I'm not bike fit. That's one of the things I'd like to do. It's so easy for me to do. I just need to set it all up so it's effortless. I also then need to start using my bike when the weather's good, which I'm looking forward to getting out back out because I've got a really nice bike. And I want to make the most of it. Going back then, let's get into YouTube. So YouTube, as you can see, is one of my New Year's resolutions. And it's simple. YouTube create one video and a maximum of three videos for 12 months. Completely doable. That's it. Not I'm not worried about subscribers. I'm not worried about views. No one's going to watch the first 100 videos I do. I just need to hone the skill, get better at editing, get better at making content, get more comfortable in front of the camera. And so the only way to do that is create content, you know, Everyone's got to start somewhere. So that's more on for YouTube. And I'm looking forward to this the most because I'm loving it. Third thing is business. I've had a number of small businesses before. I've got a couple currently, which I'm sort of going to stop, I think. And I'm going to focus all my efforts into something new. It's something that has been annoying me for ages and my friend. So we're going to pair up together. It's in the fitness industry. I will be able to say it soon. We're so early doors, we're only at idea stage, and I'm going to vlog the journey. And if it, and hopefully it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But at least there's, you'll see how we did it, what we learned, share the lessons forward, pay it forward. So that's business. The fourth thing is sleep. So sleep is critical in everything. How you feel day to day, achieving your goals. I had a period ages ago, for about a decade, I didn't sleep very well at all. No more than like four hours a night. Terrible. Long story, I will do a vlog on sleep because there's so much into it. There's things that I did before that I stopped doing. So like a year ago, or before that, I stopped that a year ago, I used to start waking up at 5am. So one of the goals is to to get back into the 5am club Monday to Friday. The weekends, I will still probably get up early, but I'm not going to set a hard stop on it. It it was a game changer when I did that. I got so much more done. I felt better. And one thing for me is, if I get up at five, I still feel like shit. If I get up at nine, I feel like shit. Or if I get up at 10, so I just as well get up at five. And once I'm up, I'm after like 15 minutes, I feel great. It's one of the huge benefits. Going to do that. The second one is I've got this thing called a Lumi lamp. It works with your circadian rhythm. So essentially, when you wake up in the morning, the sun rises and then you press a button at night when you get into bed. The sun sets, takes about 35 minutes and it allows your body to naturally want to go to sleep. Great thing. I don't use it enough. I'm going to use it every day. The third thing is I've got a good watch. I don't know why I'm not using the sleep app from Garmin. I just need to sync it onto my watch and track my sleep. It'd just be interesting to really know how much am I getting and some more of the data. The fourth thing is never have my mobile in the bedroom at night. The reason for that is I get distracted and I like to research stuff on YouTube and I'll get into a rabbit hole. Before I know it, it's 1am and I'm so far into this rabbit hole that I don't want to, you know, it's just a distraction. So I'm going to put my phone in a box, keep it in a separate room. I'm going to do that from next week at night time, once when I go to bed religiously and I'm going to see how I get on. I have uh, one called Audacious Goals. As you can see I don't have anything in it currently. That's for things and I will write a couple in there in due course which is so unrealistic to happen but it's nice to have them down so it could be anything, something like my dream of. I put them in each year and it allows me to at least the vision in my head is I'm heading this way. I don't know how long that's. It might take me 10 years, it might take me 25 years, but I'm heading in that direction. And all these things stack on each other, like marginal gains. And after five years, 10 years, you get closer to the goal. 
So that's where we're going. You'll notice this year, obviously I've got less of I said. The reason for that is they all stack together. To produce the videos I want to on YouTube around fitness, by vlogging the training, sorry, it allows me to pr produce content weekly for the YouTube channel. To be able to do that, I need to get up early. I need to manage my time better. I need to get sleep better. The business one also relates to the fitness, which also relates to YouTube. So they all intertwine. And I think that's part of it. If you can get your goals to intertwine, it's a lot easier to stick to them. Because if I don't do one of them, it's very unlikely I'll do the other ones. So that's my goals for 2024. Once I get my goals outlined in Notion, I then think about what does that look like over a year? And this is how I do it. So I get this calendar off Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. In a nutshell, as you can see, it's just comes in the post. I've got a bit of bit of plywood and I just screw it, screw it to them. From screw it to screw it to the board. On the board, I segregate things into categories. So blue is when I'm gonna post on YouTube. It was meant to be one every three days at the moment for January, so hence they're in there. Fitness events are in yellow, so key events over the year. So, for instance, Paris, Paris Marathon, massive event. It's, it's in yellow. When I think I'm going to take annual leave at my day-to-day -day job is in orange. And bank holidays are in green. I haven't finished populating this, but it'll be done by the end of January. I'm a visual guy, so it allows me to look at the year on a macro level and go, wow. That's what I'm going to do then. It's easy to coast along in a year, think about stuff, but not do it. When you have it on a board like that, it reaffirms it every day. You go, oh shit, yeah, I've got all this free space. I'm, I'm rather than go into that weekend not planning anything, let me do the thing with my friend I wanted to do. Let's climb that mountain. Let's go to that place. Let's do that thing. Let's reconnect that person. It could be anything. Get it down. High level. Make sure you finish the year with things that you really want to have done. It could be one thing. It could be 10 things. But put them down. Have them as visual markers. I can't um, speak highly enough about it. So I'm going to put mine up now. When I wake up in the morning, it's there on the wall. I will finish that in January and I'm looking forward to having a completed canvas.